Welcome back. Please comment, rate, subscribe, folks. Comment, rate, subscribe, like the videos. Also, share the videos. I want to thank you folks for liking, watching, and sharing my videos. You people are the absolute best. Listen, football's here. It's time to talk about it. You got a lot of teams that are still scrapping, still clawing, still fighting, trying to get to the Super Bowl. So before I get into my, my conference championship picks, before I get there, I want to go over my divisional round picks, go over the recap of that, and really talk about, you know, my results and what happened. You know what I'm saying? I covered two games, so I, I want to talk about what happened in those games and, you know, what were the results of those? I'm not going to hide them from you folks. So let's go ahead and get right into my divisional round recap. First game I covered from the division round, Texans at Chiefs. I took the Chiefs in this football game, and I got myself a W. Chiefs beat the Texans 51-31, to 31, man. Early, the Chiefs were on the ropes. It looked like they, it really looked like they were done. You know, there was even a Chiefs fan that walked out. I think they got down by 21 or 24 points uh, early. There was just a lot of mishaps, special teams mishaps. Uh, you know, just stuff just wasn't going right. But, hey. You know, they looked at the situation and said, hey, we're not done. We're going to regroup, recoup, and we'll be right back. And they came out and they just, you know, start putting up points. And that offense is extremely explosive. Mahomes and all them boys got together and they got themselves right back in the game and took themselves a W. So shout out to Chiefs fans. You folks got yourselves a W. I took the Chiefs and I got myself a W as well. Next game I covered from the divisional round, Seahawks at Packers. Man, listen, took the Packers in this football game, and I got myself another W. Packers beat the Seahawks 28-23, to man. Packers just keep on moving, you know what I'm saying? They did just enough to get the job done. So shout out to Packers fans. You folks got yourselves a W. I took the Packers, and I got myself a W as well. Whew. So now it's time, folks. I'm ready to talk about it. I'm ready to get into the conference championship picks, Okay. Team scrapping. They still trying to go. So let's go ahead and get into my picks, all right? First game I want to cover from the conference championship games, Titans at Chiefs. Man, listen, start the Chiefs side of the football first. I'm going to keep things really simple here. First thing I think of when I look at the Chiefs and I'm saying to myself, what are you going to do about this man, about this beast that they call Derrick Henry? All right. Can you stop him? Because if you can't, <laughs> it's going to be a long day for y'all, man. It's going to be a long day. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a long day. The number one thing for the Chiefs, they've got to slow down this running game. They must tackle Henry. Week in and week out, we've heard people talk about how, oh, yeah, you know, it looked like such and such team really didn't want to tackle him. It looked like such and such team didn't really have a plan on stopping him. And he's just continuing to run through people like a Mack truck, okay? You got to find some way to, to take this guy, you know, to slow him down or take him out of the game completely. You can't let him get into the second level. He's shown you time and time and time again that he will abuse safeties. He will completely just roll over a corner like nobody's business. You've got to gang tackle him. You've got to corral for the ball when the ball gets handed off to him. And you've got to bring him down. This dude is, this dude is man, he's a monster out there. And he's the big focal point on that Titans offense. You've got to stop him. You look at the Titans side of the football, and the first thing I'm looking at this Titans team, I'm looking at the defense, and I'm saying to myself, can you slow down the explosion of this Chiefs offense? Primarily, Travis Kelsey. Here's a guy that had a big impact uh, last week against the Texans. you got to slow him down. And they use him in so many different ways. Um, they move him around a lot. Uh, he's a guy that can, I mean, can run every route. He's a big body, especially in the red zone. They target him quite a bit. You've got to be able to slow this guy down. Uh, you got to be able to, you know, get him covered. Maybe one guy, if you can, because they have other weapons as well that they work off of. Watkins, Hill. Uh, you got to just make sure that Travis Kelsey isn't having a huge impact in this football game. So, man, that's going to be a big task for that Titans defense. So, with all that said... I am taking the Chiefs to win this football game 24 to 20. 24 to 20. I'm taking the Chiefs. I think it's a close game. I think the Chiefs just take it away late. So again, I am taking the Kansas City Chiefs to beat the Titans 24 to 20. Comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. All right. So we're going to move on to the next one. All right. Listen, 
my next game that I'm going to cover from the conference championship, Packers at 49ers. <laughs> Man, listen, I'm going to start the Packers side of this football first. I'm looking at this Packers team and I'm saying to myself, can you, can you defend the Niners front? Listen, this Niners defense is something else, okay? And if you want to keep Aaron Rodgers upright, you got to make sure that you can get these guys blocked. They're led by this young dude, Bosa. They got other guys that just get after it. And I mean, they rush the passer. Earlier in the year when they played the uh, Packers during the season, they really banged Rodgers around. I mean, they got after him. They had him run off the spot. They got pass rushers galore coming after him. The Packers have to find some type of way to get to keep Aaron Rodgers protected. You've got to. Uh, whether it be, you know, bringing Jones out on some, some, uh, some, type of bubble screens, something. you got to make sure you get the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands quickly and make sure that he's protected. Because if you don't, man, let me tell you something. It could be a long day. We've also seen this Niners defense, primarily the pass rushers, turn their stuff into turnovers, strip sacks, uh, you know, forcing guys into interceptions because they have to throw the football fast. Just a lot of issues. So you do not want that to happen. You don't want to turn the ball over against the Niners because they will make you pay with that, all right? Um, I'm looking at the 49ers side of the ball right now, and I'm saying to myself, hey, can you put up points, you know? Listen, the Packers are not garbage on defense either. They got the Smith brothers, you know, Zardarius, Preston. Those guys get after it. Those are two very solid pass rushers. They acquired them during last offseason in free agency. That was one of the big parts in their defense they felt like they were missing. They said, hey, we don't have that guys that can get after it. Let us go get these two guys and just let them pin their ears back and go. And that's exactly what they do a lot of times. So I'm looking at Garoppolo. I'm looking at the offensive side of the football. Guys like uh, uh, Coleman, uh, Kittles, um, you know, we all know Emmanuel Sanders is a solid wide receiver. Debo Samuel as well. You know what I'm saying? Can you guys really get rolling early and put up some points here? Because, again, this Packers team, you know, if they can get some stuff going offensively together, you guys got to get after it offensively too. Um, so, with all that said, I am taking the Niners to win this football game. I'm taking the Niners to win this football game 30 to 23, 30 to 23. I'm taking the Niners. Comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. I think the Niners front is going to be just outrageous. And I think that they create a bit of turnovers in this game. And I think that the Niners will also have solid uh, field position as well due to the solid play of their defense. And they'll be able to put up some points here. So again, I am taking the Niners to beat the Packers. All right. Comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. Last but not least, okay. The greatest time of the week is when you talk about the Jets, baby. <laughs> All right? Let's have some Jet talk. You know what I'm saying? Because clearly, the Jets are not in the playoffs. Who knows when we'll be in the playoffs again. But I'm not going to push us aside. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of people have been commenting, talking about how they love you know, the Jet talk. I mean, keep it going. I'll keep it going. I'm not going to stop doing that. I'll keep it going throughout the, uh, throughout the rest of this season and the offseason as well. So... Today's Jet Talk is going to be about the offensive line, all right? The offensive line, I've been talking to people about this offensive line for years. Um, you know, particularly when, when Mike McCagnan was here during his the start of, of that regime, McCagnan and Bowles, I kept saying, hey, Mike McCagnan's got to address this offensive line. There's issues here. He's got to get it together. And he really showed throughout his tenure here that he didn't really did not value offensive line or offensive line play. He would just think he can just do whatever with, you know, just silly glue and, 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 and duct tape. He could just strap together something to go out there and everything would be fine. And time in and time out, we were shown that these porous offensive lines he was putting together, they weren't getting the job done. And our offenses were, were getting stalled and halted because of it. So I look at this situation that we have this year, you know, because McCagney is gone. He's been fired. We've got Joe Douglas here. We've got Adam Gaze here. Yeah, we got this guy here. But this offensive line needs work. Um, you've got guys like Kelvin Beecham, uh, you know, Alex Lewis is starting, um, you know, he was starting there, uh, Harrison at center, uh, Brian Winters, uh, Brandon Shell at right tackle. Um, I look at this situation like I'd like to get rid of all those guys if I really could. And I think you kind of can, especially with this offseason with the offensive linemen that are in free agency. Um, I look at this situation with Kelvin Beecham. He's a guy I'd like to move on from this offseason. I do not want him back here. I think we could either draft a left tackle, as 
really what I'd like to do, uh, particularly with our first round pick. I think there'll be left tackles available, and I think that that's an area that we can move on from him. I think when you look at our guard spots, uh, that's something that we can improve vastly in free agency. For me, big time signings must happen, and the big time signing that I'd like to see us make this year is Brandon Sheriff. I want him here, I want him on our team, I want him playing guard. Um, I'd love to see Brandon Sheriff and Joe Thune brought in. Uh, that will secure our two guard spots. Harrison is the only guy where I'm kind of okay, I guess, with him still staying here as a center, but I would like to possibly see us use our second round pick to really fill that center spot as well and maybe put him back into a backup role. But if he ended up being a starter, I guess I, I would be okay with it somewhat. Um, but I'd like to see us move on from him in the future too and draft a, you know, or, or free agency or draft another lineman, particularly off, next offseason because there's just a lot of movement to make on the offensive line. But that right tackle spot, though, uh, Jack Conklin is out there, and I want him on this team too. So to me, you sign those three guys, Sheriff, uh, Conklin, and Thune, and boom, your offensive line just becomes immediately better. Um, and that's what we need to do. This offseason needs to be about investing around Sam and making sure that Sam – um, you know, can have every chance in the world to succeed. If we're doing anything else, then we're being dumb and we're being extremely unproductive. You already have Adam Gaze here, which is halt halting a lot of growth that Sam could have. Don't have him running around for another season, running for his life out there because the offensive line can't block. Let's sure this up this season. Let's do whatever we can do. And from, you know, everything we know about Joe Douglas, he's the guy that wants to do that. He talks about the trenches. He talks about how important it is. So, We'll see what he does this offseason, but those three guys, Sheriff, Conklin, and Thune, to me, uh, would make our offensive line immensely better. So we need to make sure that we can attack this. Uh, so comment down below. Let me know what you folks think about that. What are your feelings about the offensive line? Do you think that we should, you know, have Kelvin Beach and back for another year? I've heard a couple people try to make arguments for him. I'm not interested in that at all, but I want to hear your thoughts, you know, and also if, if you don't like any of the linemen that I name, you know, what kind of offensive linemen are you folks thinking about? You know, who do you want to see sign in the offseason? Let me know. So again, comment down below with your thoughts on that. So listen, you folks, Football is here. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy your times with your family. Sit down with your favorite beverages, whatever they are, you know, soda, water, juice. Have your favorite food, pizza, nachos, whatever it is. Sit down with your families and enjoy your times, all right? Football is here. It is time to have fun, all right? So you folks have a good one. Peace.